Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bright and Pedro Mateus, and you at home. Hello, hello. Watching us live, man. Um, Big week, busy week, all kind of week. It's yeah, no longer my busy. favorite four-week block of the year. October is over. I'm a little bit sad about that. But, hey, I had some great deals on house decorations. <laughs> which, you know, pretty happy about. Listen, <laughs> have no illusions, kids. 90% of my house looks like regular house, but that last 10% looks exactly what you would envision my house looks like. Um, so... There is that. What's everyone been up to? Pedro, you got, you've got you been playing a game, man, and like Discord, you've been posting pictures of what I can only assume is Minecraft with wheels. <laughs> yeah, without the digging. Uh, you just uh, put some towers, some resource extractors down to do the uh, digging for you. But now, uh, thanks to a certain mere PPC, um, mm -hmm. you may know him as Patrick, uh, decided, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to mention that uh, the developers of Windward have actually created, or the developer, I should say, have actually created uh, an extra, uh, another game in preparation for Windward 2, which is Project 5 Sightseer. And 10 hours of my life have already been taken away because <laughs> Project Sightseer is basically uh, Windward, but land based and uh yeah it, there's a lot of um just exploration meandering about without an objective it's the kind of games that ven wouldn't like <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it is uh i i it's very much my uh cup of chainsaw so to speak uh also the other thing that i started playing around with some more was the pine book completely nondescript black laptop yeah it's um once I managed to get it in my head, it's not an x86 laptop. Stop, just stop treating it, treating it like one. Uh, how long have you yeah. had that? A uh, couple of months. <laughs> so yeah, once I finally stopped, it actually okay. It's an ARM notebook. Let's just see what we can do. And I actually got a bunch of uh, open source uh, game engine re-implementations up and running, and they work really well. Being able to play Diablo at 1080p on the uh, Pine Six uh, Pinebook Pro, it's it's really nice. Also, got another soldering kit. It's got uh, teeny tiny little LED Aww. screens. <laughs> so yeah, once I'm done. Um, soldering the leds to the uh little hourglass one this one comes next it comes with a buzzer it has a buzzer <laughs> oh that's cool it's gonna be interesting <laughs> to see how nori decides to force feed it to you what's up with you jill oh boy i have a lot going on um the big news is is now i am hosting the destination linux video podcast each week with noah chalaya michael tonnell and ryan doskeek and it was really an honor to be asked. And nice. uh, the announcement goes out today. And of course, LGC is my first love, and you can always find me here. But if you want to hear more, then check out my journey on Destination Linux. <laughs> Yay, so exciting. <laughs> Man, we were talking. I got a couple things going on. A couple things we were talking about in the pre show. I've got a new access point for you in the studio. And of course, it's a microtech. And microtech's like, hey, man, do you know what we need in a basic plane? Um, access point. I'm like, what's that microtech? Rad OS, you know, half a gig of RAM, 64 bit ARM, but it's an access point microtech. It's like, you will learn unnecessary things to set this, which I will. I look forward to it later this week. Um, that's the thing that's going to go down. But we were talking about just, we can understand like podcasting as a whole, at least for me, maybe I'm alone in this. It's my generation's pirate radio. <laughs> it is, you know, we, we don't, if you grew up, if you were an eighties baby, maybe there was a chance you could set up a transmitter and people were listening to the thing called radio. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a chance, you know, doing a podcast today, it's a chance not to have the FCC or your local, you know, the beebs breathing down, like you can have these four shadows and obey. You can be a little bit strange. You, you don't, you don't have to fit into a mold. You don't, you don't have to be an amalgam. that's like an automaton, but like everything's homogenized and great. We are all separate individuals. Have some life, mm -hmm. have some fun, 
get out there and live a little with that. But, you know, I, I just say that as a suggestion to anybody doing podcasting, man. Don't yeah. don't fall into <laughs> the trap of like we need now okay, I'm not hating on anybody, but don't get to where you're just so advertiser friendly you're putting people to sleep. Maybe I can think of a few examples. <laughs> Like Pedro's latest show, putting people to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Put people to sleep with Pedro. Yes, I love the alliteration. (laughs) Maybe it's just like the rebel on me. When I started doing all this, I was like, we're we're just going to be ourselves. We're just going to 100% to our detriment. But (laughs) at the end of the day, we can't be characters. It just doesn't sit well with me and a lot of other people. But maybe think about that, you know, yes, you got to be able to pay for yourself and, you know, getting ads and all that fun stuff. That's fun. But I think this probably affects more like you. I think it's more obvious with YouTubers right now, isn't it? There's a lot of uh, homogenization, especially yeah. like the mid tier of uh, influencers, not just on YouTube, but like Instagram is a big one nowadays. There, there's a lot of the same. <laughs> Hey, we, you know what? Let's just up our thumbnail game on YouTube. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you have to put more red arrows. <laughs> we're going to do red arrows and we're going to give you like nine headaches. <laughs> All the hands. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Temple. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Um, come on. Let's uh, jump right into our um, yes. exciting... I don't know. It's not exciting, but I thought we'd want to <laughs> X give it is dead. X is going to give it to you, baby. This, this was like jumped around last week on the internet. And, um, well, Adam, Adam's kind of been keeping X, you know, X org alive, everything together up to date. And he's like, mm. let's talk about abandoning the X server. And just to get right into it, you know, he says like, there's been some recent discussion about whether the X server is abandoned where. As the person arguably most responsible for its care and feeding over the last 15 years or so, I feel like he has something to say. Basically, this is a big, chunky paragraph that boils down to, here's where he's at right now. Not really broke, don't fix. Man of my own heart. Mm -hmm. But bug fixes, keep it maintained, and allow X to be what it will be just 10 years for Waylon is a great compatibility layer. It th- does that sound too crazy, man? Because you know it, it doesn't sound crazy at all. No, not I at all. feel like right now it's in maintenance <laughs> mode, and that's pretty. That's fine. It X it works. Is, yeah, exactly. I, um, yeah. It works fine. I don't have a problem with it. And we do all of this on Linux, and Waylon's got a long way to go before we're doing this. The Waylon, uh. <laughs> Don't stress yeah. about it. Um, yeah, it's going to be around for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, X isn't going anywhere anytime soon, mostly because Wayland isn't going anywhere anytime soon either, unfortunately. Um, and, and now that we have one of, if not the major dev um, for X saying that maybe it's, you know, time to started thinking about something else because X has kind of peaked and it can't really go anywhere from now. Can we get Waylon going? Please. Pedro, are you coming at it yeah. from like, this is your final warning? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the final warning because I've been using Linux long enough to know that, you know, XFC is still around, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Yeah, no, if the moment we have someone with that kind of credentials and, like he says, has been uh, caring and feeding uh, X for the past 15 years, can we please just get on with Waylon? NVIDIA, please. (laughs) Pedro, do you know what happens if you feed an X server after midnight and get it wet? (laughs) It lets me play video games on Linux? No. (laughs) Me. (laughs) Ah, uh, baby, come on, that was a funny joke. Oh, it was too easy. To make. 
<laughs> Yay. So Wayland, the final frontier. Yeah, that, that's what we're all waiting for. But it's going to be a bit before that's baked. So I like Pedro says, I don't think we have any have to be worried about XOR going anywhere. I and, you know, I'm around, just starting. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's been around for years. I've been using it uh, since. I think uh, that well, wacky upstart X has got a, <laughs> it's got some legs, Joe. It's got, yes, it does. <laughs> X free 86. <laughs> you remember installing Slackware disk with X free 86. And, and he even uh, mentions uh, <laughs> Zephyr. It's like, okay, so you work on Zephyr too. Cool. Zephyr is really mm. good if you're trying to run um, applications and games that only work in 16 bits of color, mm -hmm. which if you've tried that in Wine under Linux, it goes, eh, eh, no. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, just have something like Zephyr, but for everything that X currently does. That's all we need. But well, it needs to be at the point that it can do everything else. Well, maybe exactly. you're right, Pedro. <laughs> this is going to be the right motivation. I can say, <laughs> like, no hyperbole or anything. I cannot do this show the way we're doing it right now with Wayland. Mm. Yeah. The tools mm -hmm. just don't exist. So best of luck. And don't worry. You know, X is still going to give it to you. But, <laughs> oh, yay. Let's talk about <laughs> Snap. <laughs> Everyone loves it when we talk about Snap, man. They're like, oh, great, let's go get some fun. This is going to be nice, man, because this is from uh, the Ubuntu blog, and they find fine, fine cannibals over at Canonical. They're like, let's talk about Snap and speed improvements with new compression algorithms. Jill, it looks like they've switched the LZO yes. and the XZ. Yes. Yeah, so LZO is a much better compression option than XZ for snaps. Um, LZO, as some of you may know, is called the Lempel Ziv Oberhumer <laughs> compression. And it's larger, the compression is, is the file is a larger size, but decompresses a lot quicker, resulting in a faster snap in faster snap boot up times. And the this LZO compression um, and uh, LZW have been around for a while. I used to use them on large animation projects back in the 90s. And it's they're just really fast at decompressing when you want to retrieve those files fast. So this is a really good move uh, by Net, by Snapcraft. <laughs> yeah, that bit that Ven was highlighting if you were watching in the video version. Pedro, that five, is exactly five seconds. Five that's seconds. exactly the bit that I want to call shenanigans on. Why? Uh, ad uh, admittedly, they were uh, using Fedora, so maybe they didn't know entirely what they were doing. But there's no way that Snap, either version of it, uh, is faster than a native install of anything on a hard drive. Because the way that Snaps work is before uh, the thing, you know, the application that you're trying to run, it needs to be uncompressed. It needs to be mounted in a sort of RAM disk. Well, it is effectively a RAM disk. And then it boots from there. So it has to go from the hard drive to the RAM disk, and then it shows up. While in the hard drive, uh, if you're just running the native version, it just goes from the hard drive <laughs> to RAM. There. No decompression necessary because it's all there. It's just a copy. So there, unless they had something running in the background, that uh, hence my comment that they didn't know what they were doing, um, that they weren't aware of, there's no way. D there's just... No way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, nice try. Uh, the other, uh, all of the other uh, benchmarks, yeah, those are about what I would expect if you're changing from so one compression algorithm to another one. So you are calling shenanigans on the um, five seconds? Mm -hmm. I'm calling shenanigans mm -hmm. on uh, snaps being faster than native, yes. Okay. Yeah. Because as they spent the entire rest of the article basically proving what I've been saying for the longest time, exactly right, that makes two. It's uh, the GNOME project and <laughs> snaps now. Uh, yeah, no, that um, that's the one point I, I call shenanigans on. Everything else, yeah, no, I'm okay with. So you're saying it's not a good thing that snaps are getting faster? Uh, no, I, <laughs> I'm sure it's a great thing if you use See. snaps. Personally, yeah. I believe that they've made it so fast that you can't even fathom. You, you can't, your, your simple <laughs> mind can't comprehend the new speed of snaps. <laughs> oh, Aww. so uh, they're quantum snaps now? <laughs> uh. You can have that one for free canonical. 
Um, <laughs> quantum snaps baby i don't know man my um i'm say good on them you got to try it again mm-hmm. this goes back to you know things like the ubuntu phone mirror stuff and like snap i understand like hey one of these days we're going to find a problem that containerization on the desktop solves uh, but, but they will create that problem if they have to because at this rate it's not happening <laughs> They're still trying. Here's my whole thing. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> I I want to be wrong. I, I want somebody to roll out and be like, okay, you know, again, I think we're all in agreement that, you know, on server, um, headless, perfect sense, data center, perfect yeah. sense, VMs, perfect sense, desktop. You still got some sliding to do on that. But <laughs> here's what I want to know. I want to get a hold to somebody who works with snaps, A, just to like explain explain a lot of this also it would make me very happy if you would come on the show and prove pedro wrong because that would make me happier than anything else. yeah no do it live in front of me i want to see it oh, i will eat all the crow but i want to see it we're talking about um <laughs> compression which leads me to think if we're dealing with like desktop applications and correct me if i'm right this is 2020 correct unfortunately yes okay yes um <laughs> Why are they compressed in the first place? It's raisins. Is, is that not a valid <laughs> question for like desktops? I'm like, if you wanted to speed up with compressing it, um, maybe question mark. I don't Which know. Is like, why I call shenanigans because I, a native I am install isn't speaking from an e- just a place of pure ignorance. Maybe they all need to be compressed for like reasons or I. Mm. In for me. I look forward. Send us some feedback. That'd be kind of great. Uh, good news, everyone. Yeah. So this is really exciting in the Risk Five world. The Sci-Fi High Five Unmatched Board Development Board for testing Linux software and hardware. Who's going to be that guy? That heat sink needs a fan. It's too tall. Oh, it is very <laughs> tall. <laughs> uh, um, board has been released for the Open Risk Five architecture. And actually, it's only, and this seems like a lot, but it's actually inexpensive um, for a development board at only $665. It is Too definitely <laughs> a cheaper option, but it is a lot cheaper, Pedro, than the previous development boards we've talked about that were thousands of dollars that were Granted. risk five. <laughs> And uh, But what's nice is this one comes with all the usual PC connections and ports in a mini ITX form factor, which is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so Ven had a lot, a lot of details and, and specs to, to say about it. <laughs> I do. Somebody needs to bang suggest quantum snaps, though. Um, <laughs> they they already did. Okay, good on you. <laughs> Our Theron you already did. <laughs> you're brilliant. I love you. So, yeah, man, let's talk about the specs for this thing, because you're going to be getting 8 gigs DDR4, 32 megs uh, quad SPI flash on board. Um, the SOC is going to be the U740. And these are the same people. These are the people that, like, hey, we can bring you out of order Risk Five, which is like, oh, neat. They know what they're doing. Four USB 3 ports, uh, one by 16 PC IE hole, man, that's going to be Gen 3. M keyed M.2, so you got one for the Wi-Fi's and you got one for storage. That's brilliant. Now, to the point, to uh, I think Pedro might, I mean, these are not Raspberry Pi level tinker boards. These are not no. meant for the consumers. <laughs> this is not for the home market. Uh, they're not fleshed out. There's barely an ecosystem for these things. You know, and outside of like their Linux ISO, what do you have? You have something they call freedom studio i went and looked at it it's basically eclipse um you know ide they get a gcc tool chain so you can build some stuff and uh the freedom usdk whatever that is and a smattering of like lower risk five tools for 600 bucks for a development board for something like oh here uh this is for your enterprise go prototype on this thing yes we know the heat sinks a little tall then already brought it up but <laughs> you have to live with it that's what it says in the manual what should say um, probably don't even get a manual over this, man. There's like here. There's no. Probably not. There's like, there's a PDF in this link <laughs> hidden in this thread. So go ahead. Right. Dude. Um, uh, but you know, the U740, you know, all right. I, I, I get, I, I get it. Again, I do. <laughs> ITX form factor too, which is kind of. Yes. 
Yeah. ITX Wonderful. is nice. Uh, there was that uh, micro ATX before, which also very expensive. It's like fourteen hundred dollars for that micro ATX one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look. <laughs> It took me a long time to convince myself to get uh, <laughs> my hands on this Pinebook Pro, and that was only 200 pounds. $665. Eh, no. I just, no. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's meant for you. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Not at that price, it is. <laughs> I would like one to play with just to see what I can do with it. Um, Like, audio side, but I'd be deep into mm. like like how good is the tool chain for getting everything built and i don't know that's probably a time vampire right now you're developing the tool chain <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, i remember doing this um <laughs> so maybe not maybe not maybe you want something that's a little more i don't know x86 in your life <laughs> yeah so this is uh the libra mini version 2 is actually now available and it has a much faster four core i7 processor at 4.9 gigahertz and it's actually the same price point as the original uh libra mini so what's really nice is if you would like an in you know my idea is if you would like an intel nook but want open firmware such as core boot or pure boot and a linux os already installed then buy a libra mini instead of a nook <laughs> a nice a really tight sweet little machine. box that can hit 4.9 yeah. gigahertz on one core for uh, yeah. half a nanosecond on Tuesdays <laughs> after 3 p.m. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Come a nook. On. It's not. With, yeah. you know, core boot or um, what's the other one? Um, Extra core boot? I don't know. <laughs> pure boot. <laughs> pure boot. <laughs> pure boot. Yeah, <laughs> pure, uh, yeah, pure OS. Pure boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it... it the idea behind it is nice. It's like you have a completely free uh, nook, free in the free software sense. Yeah, that, that that's what Librem does. And uh, having a admittedly uh, gimped, not the uh, <laughs> not the image uh, manipulator, but uh, a uh, reduced functionality version of a desktop PC. I guess it's a start for if they want to have like a full on mini ITX or micro ATX size desktop PC that you can then populate with the Intel graphics card that's totally coming out next year, no, you, you guys. Just, you yeah, use a Nook for nice. what you're going to Nook. And I'm, um, I mean, Nook's going to Nook. Also, 700 bucks for Nook. Not a bad price. Nope. Mm -mm. I looked for, like, these two boxes on the set here. These are uh, old Dell 3010s, and I really wanted to I have like a nice little stack of nooks, for like multiple boxes, but it's uh uh. I could buy five of these Dells for the price of like one outfitted nook. So it's a good price. Yeah, good for look. the complete system mm -hmm. because yeah. the bare, they come as bare bones units. So. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and so this, this one does come with 64 um, gigs of RAM. It already comes with uh, what you need. It comes with RAM running. and the processor. Yeah. I, uh, do you have to provide the storage? That's the one thing I couldn't see. Um, storage <laughs> is okay. Memory at six ninety nine. Yeah, you do get, have to add that. <laughs> at you're going to get eight gigs, not mm -hmm. uh, sixteen or thirty two, and you're going to get two hundred and fifty gig stat, SATA storage. Okay, so. it comes with the SATA SSD. All right, that's cool. All right, mm -hmm. and a power block. <laughs> mm hmm. Now, yeah. how much would you pay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if it's a complete system for 700 bucks for a Nook, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I've seen much more expensive than that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was impressed. It was an all-in-one system. It's a, it's a decent price, especially the thrown in the power plug. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which, I, I'm joking about this, everyone, but if we scroll down to the bottom, the first thing is like, related. wait a minute, six, that better come $60. With, no. <laughs> and it does. It does. I, I, I had to go um, do some searching because I was going to talk some smack if they didn't throw in the power cord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they did. Good on you, Lot. Good on you, Lot. Um, Pine Communicator. Pine Phone. Uh, who was it? In Discord, get his uh, Pine phone earlier this week. Uh, uh, Katana Steel Katana. got his. Artharin already had his. Sandy yeah. already had Sand his Man. as well. Yeah, <laughs> and they're playing around with it, and the mm -hmm. you know it's, it's, it's a cheap device, right? They're they're 
per, you know, I say cheap. I was like, you can just pick one up to play with. I'm like, hundred bucks. Like that. Uh, yeah, the 150, I think, for the uh, Pine Phone. It's 100 for the tablet mm-hmm. because it doesn't have the 3G module. Right on. And, and uh, yeah. Well, you're looking at that piece of kit and it can make the calls and you can run. I mean, there's a billion distributions of Linux that you can run on it currently. And well, maybe, just maybe, you don't need all that functionality and by all that functionality what am i talking about i i'm talking about just taking the modem out man just making it a communicator man because <laughs> how many times have you been out and about or just at the house and like your media consumption brick rings you're like what's this huh <laughs> you can do that <laughs> right uh-huh. fair enough and they're gonna pull that out but they want some feedback and what am i talking about just get to the point then i'm talking about the pine Um, which, you know, all this is going to be in our show notes, so you can go take a look, give them some feedback. They are thinking about uh, basically making a Pine phone minus the modem to, you know, the the only thing I'm seeing in here is, you know, will not feature a USB-C alt mode video output. Okay. Um, Will be smaller than a five inch LCD panel or less. Uh Uh-huh. It's going to rely on Wi-Fi. Okay. Here's where I'm at with this. Um, basically, what you're describing is a media consumption device that doesn't have video out, and you want to make it smaller than five inches for the view screen. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree with Vin. It, it needs a bigger screen, and the Pine Phone has a 5.95 inch screen, and the Pine Tab tablets have 10 inch screens. So how about the Pinecom be, say, seven or eight inches? That's my idea. So you have an in-between. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an in-between. You see that wall? Yeah, that's right. my Pinecom. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, cur- currently my wait, OnePlus wait. One, uh, okay. uh, my, my Here's the catch. trusty. Here's the catch. It's 53 inches, <laughs> 720p. <laughs> 53, 720. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> At least 1080p, so you can have the retina like 2x scaling. Pedro, yeah. I just knocked it down to 480i. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what about 360, Van, or 240? <laughs> so recently, I just moved from my OnePlus One to a newer OnePlus phone, and I'm, I'm planning to use my OnePlus One as a Wi Fi uh, tablet around the house. So I really think that the Pine phone should, you know, should consider keeping some of the phone functionality since is the, such as the GPS in it. Um, so you can use it like a phone r- around the house without a modem. So yeah, media uh, consumption bias, but it's live somewhere in between uh, phone size and tablet size. Yeah, we could call it a <laughs> tablet. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to imagine just consuming all my media on the screen about yay big. No. No. Um, no. Well, you could See, type on this, it. Yeah. You could write novels. <laughs> just have a keyboard. Yeah. Uh, the uh, No, last week I questioned. Oh, I didn't question. I basically implied that that TD tiny little uh, five megapixel camera module was basically e-waste. And once again, here I am questioning the usefulness of something made by pine 64 or in this case they haven't made it yet they're just asking for opinions please tell them that no the pine phone works for what it is right now it's a tinker toy but you remove the modem 3 glt thing why okay you get uh laura and laura wan um going so you can have listen a, pedro you know privacy <laughs> focused pedro, walkie-talkie pedro mateus <laughs> listen we got a pretty big run of these pine phones with bad modems, okay? <laughs> I get it, I do, but again, you waste. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I like everything about it, but uh, it, it genuinely becomes a media consumption device. And let's be perfectly honest, most people, you don't use it to make calls, but you need that modem functionality so you can go out and about. So you can have the internet on the go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can go to like large concerts and movie theaters and... Um, <laughs> Make payments with the um, <laughs> the thing that it doesn't have, <laughs> NFC. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, best luck. Go give them some feedback. That's why they open up stuff like yeah. this, which is yes. a smart thing to do. And um, don't worry. 
anything that Pedro is still trying to figure out that what is Pine Books for? So <laughs> I think I have now. He yes. spent the last, all of last month wearing it as a hat. All right. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. It was a cushion. Admittedly, it's a bit thin, but mm. it was a nice cushion. <laughs> Sturdy. Uh, at the end of the day, Nori, you won. I'll send you your 10 quid. Okay. Uh, let's go to plasma system monitoring, man. As much as I like to rag on people who like the blinky gooey stuff, uh, Pedro, you will always come out and champion and be like, blinky gooey forever. Why do I have I, a memory uh, leak? Someone has to, yeah. because both you and Jordan were very clearly against it. Uh, so I, yeah, I'll be the one to like the uh, the blinky stuff and the nice pretty gooeys. So yeah, uh, plasma system monitor has a new preview uh, that's been released. Uh, you can see what the uh, up and coming stable version will probably look like. They do say that this is very much uh, still a work in progress. It may be subject to change, uh, not limited to just the big overview tab, but also the individual ones that give you all the uh, circle graphs and everything else. And uh, it reminded me uh, a couple of weeks ago, I can remember if it was the pre-show or the uh, after show, that uh, I showed a screenshot of the current version of the Plasma system monitor on Discord and Van was absolutely flabbergasted. And I'm pretty sure that <laughs> someone from the KD development community was... Uh, listening at least and decided you know what let's go do something that or it's a continuation of their effort to quote unquote modernize uh the uh um, do you see this appearance point in of the KDU history where the rainbow goes up to do you know what that was <laughs> i can't say it this wednesday <laughs> no you can but i'll tell you what it was he, he or she downloaded a steam game <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay yeah, no, yeah that'll do it uh that uh again that decompression as it happens takes up a lot of cpu resources but yeah yes. big thanks to our <laughs> for uh bringing this to our attention and i honestly don't mind the new look at all it it looks yeah. it looks very good and you can set up new pages you can customize basically what you want to see in your system monitor which is nice it is actually very nice but i also look forward uh this is where we get into sarcasm town i look forward to the uh, the ways the spectacular ways that uh this new and improved system monitor will break and will break the rest of the system it's around it listen it might leave a few <laughs> gigabytes of memory but hey. yeah it, you mean it, it, might... it might take up all of your swap <laughs> until the system goes oh wait a second that's using too much ram it, you okay, mean it actually time. might it might crash plasma? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I that's unheard say, of. You, you, you can't, can't do that because plasma get jelly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's I, no. K okay, win is the, the worst. From my ivory XFCE four twelve tower. <laughs> no k win is the worst and now i have uh system d basically i set it up to the moment it starts using uh anywhere above two gigabytes of ram it just goes hmm. dead <laughs> well pedro do you know one of my favorite things about um linux distributions are <laughs> what's that giving them nigh unpronounceable names <laughs> <laughs> this one is pronounceable. It's Dahlia. Yeah. <laughs> Dahlia OS. Set somebody this... up for a joke. Boom. <laughs> Crushed. But in any case, <laughs> yeah. th this is uh, Dahlia OS. Uh, this is technically doesn't really qualify as a uh, Linux distribution. It does m make use of Linux. And the other thing is Fuchsia. Which you may remember is that uh, operating system that hey Google man, is currently it's, working it's on. Developed by a kitty cat. Yes, there's a kitty cat <laughs> and a hipster. I'm I'm not sorry, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, they have a website. It's uh, daliaos.io, and I, I read through the things and I I read through the uh, the latest release and they were saying, oh yeah, it's 85 megabytes. 
it doesn't support Wi-Fi. Uh, it, the current version doesn't support EFI, but if you download the older version, uh, they did get so EFI let's working roll it on back that. Just a just a hair fuchsia. That's that thing Google's working on, right? It's totes not that, Android. That's, yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, uh, I I think that uh, the general consensus on the internet was that it would replace Android at some point. Not there yet. Hmm. Most definitely not there yet. Uh, and there's some performance issues uh, with the desktop environment because it's trying to do certain things that don't really work yet. So um, I guess it's a proof of concept and using, you know, not having a kernel to run the rest of the uh, Fuchsia tool chain um, is probably a good thing that they decided to use Linux. Although at this point, What's the point? Because I thought that uh, the whole point of Fuchsia was to get away from Linux. So was Google's attempt is like, okay, we we did the Android, we did the Chrome OS. Can we do our own thing now, please? Yeah, I don't know. Well, they're supposed <laughs> to have two different builds: um, the Fuchsia OS uh, kernel, which is the Zircon kernel, and the Linux kernel one. So they're developing in in both areas and. Yeah, that's a good thing, especially for, you know, helping Google out with uh, making their new their new OS for the phones. So I guess it, it, this is how it's starting. <laughs> it's interesting. going to happen first? <laughs> Let's be honest. Will we be able to buy a Google device running Fuchsia 100%, Ryan? Or will I be doing this all of this uh, production under Wayland first? Which one's going to happen? Fuchsia. Yeah, fuchsia. Yeah, I think that's coming sooner. <laughs> so, like nine years. And oh, yeah. no. Fuchsia will be dead. Uh, Google will have deprecated fuchsia before Wayland becomes a thing. Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> there that, we go. That's too easy, though. It's Google is going to do that for fun now. <laughs> <laughs> Google kills projects for the lulls these days, man. They're like, ah, too many people use it. I know that, that was a bit of a low hanging fruit, but yeah. yeah. That will happen. <laughs> um, I don't think that's a good transition from low-hanging fruit, but hey, if you like what we do, <laughs> you want to kick us a buck a week or even more, that'd be kind of brilliant. That's how we finance everything. No big bad ad breaks on Metro. We, we, we need to do a Metro ad one day, though. We need to see what we can do with the Metro <laughs> ad. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Hop in there. Get access to our Discord. Get access to our show notes. Become a sea monster of our uh, tree video. We got levels for days, executive producers. Chicago even does a thing. You can even hop on the show. We do appreciate that. That allows us to basically do this, do our nonsense, do our version of Yar Pirate Internet Radio. So we're not um, homogenized (laughs) and automatons and Pedro is, I don't know. See, if we had to do that, Pedro would start like making, I don't know. Could you work under those conditions? Oh, I could. Uh, I, I would find way to uh, drop a little bit of snark here and there, but uh-huh. I probably couldn't go <laughs> as far as uh, I have today. <laughs> <laughs> if you like that nonsense, uh, we get shirts, we get stickers. Look at that. That's a sticker. That's a sticker from our own That's- store covering up a naughty word with a slightly less <laughs> naughtier word because, hey, it's me. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, store.linuxgamecast.com if you want to wear our sh- uh, shirts, if you want to see what they look like. Uh, Go watch past episodes because uh, anytime I need, need like an extra 20 bucks, I just put a new show, uh, shirt out. Joe will buy it. And, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but if yeah, you want so to go. wear our shorts, uh, shorts, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no shorts oh. were harmed. I think we keep getting it's like a list of new products that I, I don't know. Like if you got something, I might be doing some beanies for winter time and we're going to be doing our, um, that would yearly, be cool. um, hell Santa <laughs> t-shirt. Nice. But, yeah. That, that's that. Keep being awesome. Thanks. And, uh, come say hi in discord. That's, uh, yeah. one thing that like trips me out because I, I always pop in, uh, we have live IRC completely free. That's always there. And that's bridge to our discord. If you want to chat one thing about our discord, then always, um, Surprised me. Well, we have good conversation going on there. But the fact that we have conversation because we have like what, like 86 to 100, whatever, um, people in Discord, we have people rolling in and out and all that fun stuff. Then you go to like these massive, like just open Discords, silent. <laughs> a thousand people in it. Nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, yes. it's the, the discords of that really famous YouTuber or really famous community person. That was really funny, whatever it was. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you go in and it's like, uh, oh, the that one person is not here, so everyone's quiet. There's in there. I don't know. Fair warning, we have conversations. <laughs> What's the point? Sometimes, sometimes oh. it does become like Full Metal IRC, and we'll have an idle off. But yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> like entire hours of nothing happening. It's like really that was the last. Okay. And then every now and then the conversation breaks out. Yeah, exactly. Page page is a perfect example. It's like no one's talking, nor shall mm-hmm. I. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because I like to jump in in the middle and uh, antagonize people to keep the conversation going. <laughs> it is brilliant. You get people like Darkwing, Earth, there, and Daisy, um, and the rest of the Foxy. Game. It's Foxy. it's always yeah. good to see when Foxy goes to sleep and when Foxy comes back. Some sometimes there's still a conversation going. <laughs> and Matthew will wake up and be angry at something for a few minutes until he tuckers yes. his little self out. Then he'll go on about his day. It's adorable. And- yep. And my Steve husband gets in there and enjoys talking with the with everyone about what he's working Steve's on. He's just and... come to terms that this is a social circle <laughs> at this point in yes. his life. It's yeah. too late. It he, he can't yeah. make any major life changes at this point. He's like, all right, fine. I'll roll with it. Um, yeah. But I do want to thank Linux Ganuru. Oh, he, um, what do we got? Yeah. <laughs> Linux Ganuru uh, gifted me the first person Escher like puzzler game from Steam called Manifold Garden. And I had nice. played the demo of it and loved it. And I've been following the progress of that game for several years and I've been wanting it. So thank you so much, Linux Ganuru. That's going to be a special game and I can't wait to really get into it. Thank you. <laughs> now we're going to do a slice, slice. of that. <laughs> the lowest the hanging pie. fruit. <laughs> we got to talk about this because the internet's like, oh my God, there's a Oh, this thing. is huge, everyone. So this is the Raspberry Pi 400. It's a $70 desktop PC that has been released and it is pre-built inside, yay, the Raspberry Pi keyboard. did you just see the, like, the three shot of lies? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, nope. I'm sorry. You can start from there. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll cover right here because this doesn't. Um, here we go. Hang on. Lie one, lie two, and lie three because none of that happens unless, unless. Um, step one is like, uh, someone give me a, a blade. Okay. All right. All right. We, we've sufficiently um, opened that up. Like a paper clip, uh, unfolded paper clip under the wire where the camera doesn't see it. Yeah, I'll, I'll believe it then. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, have you ever like plugged a micro, mini, or USB, anything? I'm saying this without in your favor. They they were extremely tight. Um, also, that's not going to happen. Is what I'm saying. Oh. Uh, so, as you were. <laughs> <laughs> so they were joking about the, the no, they're not video joking. They're just connection. like, oh, let's make a video. And I'm just calling BS on what's BS. <laughs> okay. So um, the keyboard has on the back of it the, the GPIO pins we all have grown to love from the Raspberry Pi. Three USB slots, SD slot, Ethernet, and two micro HDMI port- ports. And I think this is really brilliant because it harkens back to the vintage days of of the Commodore 64, the Amiga, the Apple IIs, when you used to just, you know, they were computers in a keyboard and you just plugged them into your TV. And so that's what the Raspberry Pi Foundation is going for here. And they're hoping that this will be a big Christmas gift um, coming up for this season. And I already know it is because they also make a kit, a $100 Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer kit, and it was sold out Monday morning as soon as this announcement was made. Hey, so I here in the US. I, I genuinely, I'm looking forward to another product being out of stock on the Raspberry Pi store. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? It can't just be the Pi Zero W. Come on. Well, listen, Pedro, what do you mean? We've only been doing this for like eight years. We, we don't know what yeah. demand is going to be for a product. We've never seen it happen. No. No. Even, even though I do like that Pedro was like, I could walk over to the store and get one. Uh, n- not during uh, these troubled times. What's it not open? <laughs> <laughs> Lockdown. <laughs> yeah. They don't have curbside pie. No, no, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, it's that entire um, shopping center that's closed, so no, can't go yeah. inside. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So the kit is really awesome because it comes with the official Raspberry Pi mouse and the and a charger and the SD card with Raspberry Pi OS on it and um, HDMI cable. So it comes with everything you need to just plug it into a monitor or yeah. a TV if you're if you will. Just get a little converter for the HDMI. <laughs> and it is CRT. the fastest thing they have right there because it's CRT. a. Uh, new revision of the uh 2711 yeah. soc because this thing's clocking in at 1.8 gigajoules why how could it do that well i watched a tear down and there's a big chunky metal plate it's kind of acting like i guess is an rf shield with like this little tiny piece of thermal goop pad like stuck mm -hmm. just to the cpu and i'm like that'll do it that's how you hit 1.8 kids um i think like at least half of the internet and i was like oh so this is the four gig version implying exactly what i'm implying i'll wait until the eight gig comes out um mm -hmm. yes <laughs> because it will uh hipster form factor got to approve of that um i did have the pleasure of seeing some people online and by that i mean reddit complaining uh mm -hmm. that it lacked a mechanical keyboard <laughs> yes uh, that right. would be a, <laughs> something someone would complain about like, well uh, i'm sure you can modify them if you want your argument yeah <laughs> it's useless it doesn't click and make noise for it. It, it it doesn't even or just, blink just get a raspberry pi 4 and put it in a mechanical keyboard <laughs> that'll solve that problem mm. so <laughs> what do we have at the end of the day man we have a modern zx specky that, yes. that's it man. <laughs> all i want to do is I promised I've always made it through 2020 without violating any temporal um, accords, but, but maybe for a little YOLO is, um, I want to grab one of these and mail it to Apple and send it to Apple in 1980. Just to see what they come up with. <laughs> they would have never got X86. Well, never. You, you got to think about like, well, this is, um, this, when you compare it to like the original, like Apple, um, all in wonder kit that you could buy. That thing was um six hundred and sixty six dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. it's a hundred yeah. for the full thing with yeah. the mouse, uh, the, the power supply, <laughs> HDMI <Yeah>. cable. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this is well. This is exactly what I wanted to do when I bought the uh, original um, a Pi keyboard was exactly to do something like this put a raspberry pi in there and then the moment the pi keyboard got here nori looked at it, it's like oh, fine you can have it there <laughs> <laughs> so uh that got put on hold for a little bit but now if it comes with the raspberry pi and it it is uh i, I saw that probably that same teardown the uh the pcb I can see a lot of people buying this, just ditching the keyboard altogether and taking that very <laughs> long PCB uh -huh. and putting it to use because of how all the ports are distributed and how much, you know, thinner it is because you're basically just limited by the uh, the height of the Ethernet, which is actually yeah, like less than the USBs. Like, that form <laughs> factor would fit like really nice, like on a cricket bat, wouldn't it? <laughs> cricket bat, the back of a TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's definitely priced to sell. Maybe by this time next year you'll be able to get one. Um mm -hmm. unless you're on <laughs> preparing to pay two fifty, three hundred or whatever you're gonna be paying on, on the eBay. eBay's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scalp. Yeah. <laughs> that's unfortunate. That's very, very unfortunate, but that's gonna definitely be a thing. And they are going to be making the Pi four hundred until guaranteed twenty twenty six. <laughs> okay, so you got plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the first thing I would have to do with it is uh, like uh, super hot glue some weights in it because that looks exceedingly light because there's nothing more entertaining than plugging in the HDMI cable than having the HDMI cable lift it into midair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kidding. There are some things slightly more entertaining than that, but don't get your hopes up. Hey, Android 11 is come to the Pi 4. It has. Not by official means yet. Hey. Uh, this is uh, mm -hmm. a third-party ROM, uh, which is available. It was developed by uh, Max Veninger, Weninger, however you want to say it. Uh, it is, yeah, it's Android 11. It's based on the Omni ROM, and you can load it up mm -hmm. on the Raspberry Pi 4. There are some... Um, 
caveat at this point. Uh, you're stuck in tablet mode, so some applications mm-hmm. that will try and force uh, phone mode back on, uh, you've seen those, it's the ones that only work in vertical orientation, those will freak out very, very quickly. And it would be nice because it's Android 11. That's so, better than you know, freaking out like, very slowly. I mean, yes. <laughs> It's still a Pi 4. It's not going to be very, very fast. It's very but yeah, it will methodical with its freaking out. <laughs> very deliberate. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is... Uh, I would like to see, because it is Android 11, so I would very much like to see uh, desktop mode. That would be really nice. Mm. Yeah. But yes. no, the tablet mode is all you're getting. <laughs> uh, well, you know, tablet mode will have the benefit of being usable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing which that would give it a mention. Uh, another thing, um, I got this up after your patron. You know what I'm talking about, so excuse everything. Mm-hmm. But for public consumption, so we don't really like doing paywalls, but uh, the video for the Raspberry Pi Zero SSH and Wi-Fi without a keyboard, I really should call this a silly Raspberry Pi trick because that's what it is. But you may need this. <laughs> Wi-Fi one, hacks. <laughs> one day this information might save your life. Um, but yeah, this is just like, I'm impatient. You know, I ordered the Pi Zero and I was sitting there, I was looking at it and it was looking back at me because that's what it does. Those crazy little googly eyes. And I'm like, why'd they put those on it? That doesn't make any sense. But I didn't have the adapter for the micro USB to USB. So I was like, oh man, I got, I guess I got to order one of those. That effectively put my brain into, you got 48 hours because Amazon two days to order um before that gets there can you get into it I'm like i bet i can i could so it's how to get your white like credentials and all that loaded onto it strictly through the um micro sd card so you can boot it running um raspbian os or you know the debian distro and it'll hook up to your wi-fi's and you can ssh into it and go oh boy this is slow i forgot how <laughs> How the single cores used to run because you think back to <laughs> yeah. you, you get how slow the original Pi was, and that's effectively what this little critter is. But it does work also um, with uh, da, 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 what is it? The other one I did that's also out. I don't know if we mentioned that last week. If you want to make a webcam, I got you covered, man. You you can finally see the difference in mm-hmm. um, quality. Look at and me, and you can see Ven do the shimmy shammy. That's Jill thinks that's dancing, which is more entertaining than anything else in the world. But yeah, man, that Logitech webcam. <laughs> I did not remember it looking that uh, dude. Here, here's slow. the thing. Here's the thing I had to say about that. I'm like, OK, upper left hand corner. I give you the reveal. You know what? Go watch it yourself. Ha, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, even though it's in the video. But that's a Vixia. That is the Pi HQ webcam, the 12 megapixel. That's uh, a Logitech C510. Or as I even called him, like, that's a Logitech that I found in a drawer, which I genuinely <laughs> did. And <laughs> then, of course, the camera that I'm using right now, which is an Icon D3400. Plugged into a black magic encoder cart. Everyone in Windows is like, how do you do that? And they ask me questions. Where did you get one for $100? It's called Broken. That's where I got it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Does the HDMI out work? Okay. That was pretty much it. He's like, but what about the lens? I used one from my D80 from a decade ago. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it, beautiful people. Um, do we got uh, some feedback? Yeah, we got a week? little bit of feedback. We do. Pedro, had a little bit of feedback. Tell the people where they can get a hold of us. You can get a hold of us by uh, running down the street and uh, try and catch us as we run away to maintain our social us at the distancing. Raspberry Pi store. Well, outside uh, the Grand Central, but yes. <laughs> You can absolutely try and find us in person, although with the whole lockdown thing, at least here in the UK, uh, might be a bit difficult. So best way to get in touch with us, go to LoseGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form, uh, select LWDW on the show box so that we will get your feedback and it won't be misconstrued as a little bit of hate mail for that Saturday show, <laughs> what we do. Dude, um, I made the mistake. Uh, this is something... <laughs> I just changed, updated it on our um, YouTube because, you know, YouTube has a thing for like business inquiries. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I've had it where it just said, use the contact form at. This is not a valid email address. Now I had to weigh the options. Like, do I need to make that one? Because I will. 
YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I can it log, will resolve. Yeah, I, I can spool that email <laughs> account up real quick. But I was like, okay, let's just put it to show in case somebody just immediately this that afternoon. Pedro, we have a company that wants us to uh, review a conference microphone. Oh boy! <laughs> okay, those little uh, octagon I have experience ones you put with in the those. middle of the table. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that, but like a cost-reduced version that you would find on AliExpress. Oh, oh boy! No. Yeah, <laughs> is it like the controller person that wanted us to review the controller? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this. It, it's a thing of beauty. Uh, maybe we'll pull that up next week. But um, Matt wrote in <laughs> using our forms, and he's like, yo, check this out. You crazy kids. The Android remote. Hey, peeps of LGC. Been a long time and rather silent watcher. All right. Um, our favorite. Thank you for the content. <laughs> I enjoy it. Not everyone's like you, Pedro. Not everyone sits outside in the bushes and watches. Um <laughs> I came across the Android OBS remote control app called Outfield today, and I thought of old man Vin. Not Vin, no. <laughs> Vin. Old man Vin. It's missing an N. Um, anyways, I hope you guys find it of interest and hopefully of value. Well, well, well. That's oh, it's simple... developed by another Matt. Yeah. It's Matt's <laughs> all the way down, baby. This is Matthew. But this is like a week old. Uh, Matt, thanks for sharing your project. Um, <laughs> so this is an Android app. It's using WebSockets OBS, a modified version of WebSockets OBS Java. Nice. And it's available on Android. So, okay. That's, that's the thing. Go check it out. Uh, there's your plug. See? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it is right now uh, very limited functionality. But it yeah, does show you. Uh, yeah. 100% on that. Use the uh, <laughs> website that I've led you to where you can set up all your menus and stuff like that and use the tablet. Um, that's just an easier way to do it. But hey, man, maybe in the future that will become... Um, if, if that becomes a pre-baked application and just lets you uh, basically create all the same hooks that you can right. with the current version, yeah. Yeah, great job. But right now, it's... Mm -hmm. Just bare bones. It works. It shows you the preview of the current scene. Pedro, it starts, I can't hear it you over my stream deck. Your, your, your stream deck, yeah. <laughs> These are tiny little things. I didn't realize this, this, is, this is the big one. They're stupidly expensive. Uh, yes. <laughs> also, they're a pain to get working in Linux. Nobody tells you that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> cool. That's going to do it. We need to roll out of here. Um, and on the way out, we're going to uh, thank every one in the credits mm -hmm. how about that oh yes yeah maybe i don't know let's see <laughs> do we have credits oh thanks again the next skinner for manifold garden uh thanks steve <laughs> i mean toy maker whoever on youtube <laughs> I like how Steve's going around commenting on videos that Jill's on. And he's like, uh, it's not me, you guys. Uh, it's totally uh, not Jill using Steve's account or anything. It probably is Jill. No. <laughs> oh, look at all those sea monsters. My brother, Dementor. <laughs> Death Notes. They're the Death Notes. <laughs> Purple people eaters. Yeah, I like the purple people eaters. <laughs> <laughs> they're clearly made out of sucrose. Well, they actually... That, that's one thing I never realized about that song. It's actually about eating purple people. That's right. Tie-dyed Smurfs, baby. <laughs>